So what I'll do is I'll start with, um, I'll just start with John's numbering system and review this quiz. I'll, I'll try to share it with you. Application window. I'm, I'm going to go through it sort of quickly first, and then I'll go through each one of them. So can, can you see the... Uh, Microsoft Word document now? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so here, here are the answers. I'm going to go through them just verbally, and then I'll go through them in a little bit of detail. So the first one wants to know, it says, most large-scale full fuel-burning power plants have a certain efficiency, and the answer is 30% to 50%. Uh, it's, it's, it's answer B, and I'll show you, or sorry, it's answer A, and I'll show you why shortly. The next one, it says a, a PV, a photovoltaic system that operates in parallel and is connected to the grid, is called, which one, and it's E, utility connected, grid connected, interactive, and grid tied. Those are all different names, and I'll describe that. Uh, a battery blank is a group of batteries connected together, and that is B. It's a battery bank, which is several batteries together. The next problem for is PV modules, and the question is what kind of current they produce. And that's DC current, which is answer B. Yes. Yeah, narration good. Hi. Oh, hi. Oh, I see your computer. Oh, yeah. hey, Naresh. <laughs> yeah, hi, Brad. Hey, how are you? We, we probably met uh, on Skype more than in person. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like this. This is this is great. The computers are talking to each other. I'm I'm great. Thanks. How are you? That's right. That's right. I just wanted to say hello. Thanks for doing all this work. Uh, we're uh, we're we're having conversations about our trip and, uh, with Angela, and it, we're we're working on some funding angles. Uh, so we've actually had a board conversation about getting some funding um, for some of the projects we talked about. So great. That's moving forward. So that's pretty. That's encouraging. I'm, yeah. I'm glad to hear that. I'm um, I'm wondering. We've we've sent a couple quotes for. Uh, some systems that are built here in in Missoula, and I just don't know who who makes the decisions about whether those are implemented or not. Okay, um, I think uh, Raj, who's uh, on our board, is kind of working on all that. So we'll. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm in contact with John, so we'll we'll try to keep this going. Okay, because there was there's a there's a set of panels Naresh that are made that we we've just. Um, gotten access to. They're made in um, uh, California, and they're quite unique in that they are a, a hybrid system that there's a PV and solar thermal combined together. And I know that, you know, one of the projects was to try to do uh, a solar thermal and a solar PV. Uh, these seem to be a, a very good kind of, you know, bang for your buck, if you will. Um, and then there's the other... Uh, Another set of panels that are, are fairly portable that are that have also just um, that have just come out and you know depending on exactly I haven't I haven't seen the architecture or the style of the center but they might also be an appropriate solution that's you know relatively easy to set up easy to manage uh, you know more accessible okay. than having to get up and down on roofs and things like that so there's a couple. Uh, technology solutions that uh, my partners here can provide. So just something to consider as you're as you're uh, finalizing logistics. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, I want more. I just wanted to say hello. Yeah. Hey, Thanks. good morning. Yeah, this, this has been a lot. Of, this has been a lot of fun. I it's uh, it, it's fun seeing you know me putting mm -hmm. out the you know the equations and the theory and then uh, the the neat little communication that happens within the group as they discuss the answers and 
Uh, John has done a really good job facilitating sort of the, the grading, if you will. So, I, you know, I'll put out the, the he, you know, he's put the, taken what we put together, packaged it nicely, and he's, a, he's been a good um, liaison between the two. So it, it's, going, it's going nicely. Okay, perfect. Well, yeah. I appreciate it. I won't uh, disrupt you anymore. Okay, <laughs> sounds great. All right, good seeing you. Thanks. All right, thanks. Okay. All right, my pleasure. Right. See you. Okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> he, he's such a nice man, I think, Naresh. Have, have you have you met him before? Did yeah, he's come every year. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> With his family. Oh, good, good, good. Well, I think I think we're all very lucky to have him. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'll get back into the lesson. And <laughs> do you come this summer? Hi. Hi. Okay, sorry. sorry, I had to go uh, do one quick thing. <laughs> I'm back. Okay, so let's go. Yeah, so can we see? Can you? Okay, I'm going to show you share screen. I'll go back to the Microsoft Word answer key. Okay, uh, so we did uh, PV modules create DC power. All right, uh, charge controller. Um, so A protects batteries from overcharging is the correct answer and I'll, I'll show that one also uh, then number six a blank switch allows an electrical system to be switched from primary power to an alternate to keep critical loads operating um, this is called a transfer switch transfer switch and we'll show that also this this number blank store energy and electrical field by two oppositely charged plates the answer is capacitor I'll show you that one too Eight is choose all of the following balance of systems components, um, and that's everything. So fans, this would be a load. Racks, this is part of the system that holds the panel. The junction box, we'll show you that one. The breakers and the charge controllers. So I will show you that as well. A blank is a device that converts DC power from one voltage to another. The answer is DC to DC. And I'll show you that. Uh, which is the most common type of energy storage? The answer in this case is batteries. These are also kind of fun. A flywheel, supercapacitor, pumped water, compressed air, fuel cell, they're all examples of storage, but battery is the most common. Um, yeah. This one, a blank turbine is a device that compresses and burns a fuel air mixture. 
Uh, and that's a gas turbine. That's a gas turbine. An engine usually reciprocates, goes up and down. A wind turbine does not burn anything. So wind turbines do not burn. And then power turbine, that's just every, every turbine is a power turbine. Okay, number 12, a blank is a device that converts mechanical energy into electrical. And that is a generator. So the mechanical energy is something spinning. I'll show you that as well. Uh, an inverter converts DC to AC. We've shown that. Which two components are most common in standalone utility? And the answer is you always have a PV and you're almost always going to have an inverter. Typically a DC load is, well, something like a phone, which is, which is common, but normally we're doing PV so we can have larger appliances. Charge controllers and batteries would be for um, only standalone. Uh, so charge controllers and batteries are for only standalone, not so much for utility. Okay. Generator sizing for off-grid homes is based on the minimum battery rate. So achieving a minimum C20 battery charge with inverter to charger. And we'll talk about this uh, C20 more when we're there in Sri Lanka. Okay. Engine generators in residential grid tie with battery backup systems. So the generators, is, this, is, this is A. So perhaps you see now in Sri Lanka generators. And this is uh, really what we're trying to move away from as we move away from uh, carbon-based fuels because the, uh, the generators are uh, relying on, on fossil fuels rather than renewables. Which is not the main role of an engine generator for an off-grid residential PV system? And the answer is C. So you don't, batteries do not have to rest. The batteries are always on, either charging or discharging. They like to be used. Okay, number 18. With a typical 120, 240 volt generator that's not capable of full output, what two problems occur? And the answer here is B. The inverter will not accept the generator output. And C, the load on the generator is unbalanced. And this is something that would be better to talk about with hands-on uh, there in Sri Lanka. So I'm going to leave that to a, a laboratory to explain, a laboratory exercise to explain. This one says, manufacturer rated generator output is A, should be derated for high elevation and high ambient temperatures. So I'm going to show that as well. Okay, so that was a lot of information. I'm now going to just go through a few things. So I know that was a lot. <laughs> this is a, this is a, a, a long quiz. And unfortunately, I don't have a lot of time this morning to go over it, but um, I'll go over a, a few things now, and then I'll do a second video tomorrow so that we can see all the answers. So I, I apologize, I don't have much time this morning, but let me do one or two things now, and then um, you can look over the exam, and I'll, I'll post another video tomorrow morning. Okay? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to just stop sharing this window briefly and then go to the next one. And for now, 
I'm just gonna do I'm just gonna do the very first problem and then I will finish the rest tomorrow so you can see them. Okay. So this this first problem is it's very important. So the first problem we looked at the first problem we looked at was problem one. Most large-scale fuel-burning central power plants are blank. What percent efficient? And the answer is 30 percent to 50 percent efficient. And I will show you why that's that's very important. So efficiency. So thermal thermal efficiency. And what we're going to do, we're going to go back to 1850, Sadie Carnot in France. And Sadie Carnot was looking at steam engines. And, th and one thing we know is that a coal-fired power plant coal-fired power plant is just a big steam engine. Right, so what happens in a coal-fired power plant is uh, coal comes in and coal is mainly carbon. Carbon comes in. Oxygen comes in. It gets hot. It goes to some temperature. This makes mechanical energy and that makes electrical energy and then out comes the electron. Okay, so we go from chemical chemical energy in the carbon and oxygen. We go to some high temperature. This spins a generator rotational machine and then electricity comes out through magnetism and there we go but this is what I want you to focus on right now is the high temperature inside the plant outside the plant is the low temperature and here's how the efficiency works so if we go back to Carnot efficiency is eta eta equals efficiency A equals the high temperature minus the low temperature divided by the high temperature so all of these temperatures have to be in Kelvin so if we go from Kelvin to Celsius, so to go from Kelvin to Celsius, we have to add 273 degrees. To go from Celsius to Kelvin, we have to, oh I'm sorry, I got that backwards. Go from Kelvin to Celsius, we subtract 273 degrees. We go from Celsius to Kelvin, we add 273 degrees. Okay, so let's say we're at um, 27 degrees Celsius. That equals 300 degrees Kelvin. 300 degrees Kelvin. Now, if we're if we're going to burn something, let's say we burn something at um, 
want to subtract 600 from that, so this goes up by 3. Uh, yeah. So what I want to get to is 600 degrees Kelvin. Let's see what that is in Celsius. So 600 minus 273 equals 327. degrees Celsius. So this is our low temperature and this is our high temperature. So in a coal-fired power plant the efficiency of the coal-fired power plant is 600 Kelvin minus 300 Kelvin over 600 Kelvin equals 300 Kelvin over 600 Kelvin equals one half equals 50 percent. So that's how we get back to the answer. So getting back, and that's getting back to the very first answer there on 5.2. So that's how we got answer number one most large-scale fuel burning central power plants are 30 percent to 50 percent efficient. Okay, so um, ho hopefully that makes sense. There's a lot more in this quiz. I have I have somewhere to go this morning, but I will I'll go through all of the answers on the rest of the quiz. I know there's a there's a lot there and there's a lot of neat technical detail about how all of the um, electrical components work and I just that little conversation I had with Naresh it sounds like the um, the tools the supplies the panels and all of that are coming so soon you'll be able to get out of the classroom and actually use your hands so I <laughs> hope, hope that'll be uh, a, a lot of fun for everybody and not just so much uh, you know boring learning in the classroom so um, thanks for your time this morning. I'll, I'll post this video and then I'll post another video with with the answers. So okay, and then if and I if we want to meet again tomorrow morning, I, I have some time tomorrow and also Wednesday. So this whole week is is good for me. Tomorrow, what time? Um, the same time, uh, seven my time, which is uh, six thirty eight eighteen thirty your time. Is that okay? Yeah, I have to go tomorrow outside. Okay. I I go to uh, Norelia. Okay. For two uh, two days. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. okay. Well, I will. I'll do the video. I'll post it, and then I can send the link, and you can watch it when you whenever you like. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay.